Hey guys, it's me, Ed, Eddie, Edmundo, Edward, whatever you want to call me, talking today about the spiritual side of real estate, God and real estate. More specifically, I'm going to be talking about idle prevention, how to prevent your home from becoming an idol. Now, anything can become an idol. Anything can become something that we put above God. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And uh, I'm going to use an Old Testament illustration. It says that, uh, that the Jews, when they were in the wilderness, they uh, were bitten by snakes. They started complaining, so God sent a bunch of snakes. Don't complain. Uh, God sent a bunch of snakes. And uh, Moses took this... Uh, bronze snake put it on a pole and held it up and whoever looked at the snake was delivered from the snake bite they didn't die and Jesus used the New Testament uh, used that uh, illustration in the New Testament saying you know just as Moses lift up that snake thing you know the Son of Man is gonna be lifted up. I'm gonna be lifted up and whoever looks to him you know is not gonna die in the same way uh, we're, we're delivered from the effects of sin so uh, so that's a cool thing, right? But you know what? In Later on in, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, several hundred years later from the Moses period, we learn that the children of Israel, the Jews, uh, started worshiping that snake thing. They started worshiping that thing. It became an idol. And so there was a king, a Jewish king after King David, that destroyed that thing. And uh, he was commended for it, right? Imagine if you had that thing today. Imagine if it was in a museum, how much it would be worth, everything, you know. Imagine how, you know, it could prove the Bible and this and that. But God doesn't want any idols. That's how serious he is uh, against, uh, uh, about, about us not having any idols in our lives. So people nowadays, you know, they're, they're I, I believe, that the modern idol in the Western world is, uh, you know, you got cars and you got, you got homes and people, people, images of people. People are exalting these things and whatnot. But how does the Christian prevent home worship? Okay, I'm going to talk about that right now. Number one, what did Jesus say? My house shall be a house of prayer. Use your home for prayer meetings. Use your home for Bible studies. Use your home for get together, uh, get togethers with Christians. Okay, uh, use your home to build spiritual community. Right, uh, you know that that's one way. Number two, don't be enslaved by your home's mortgage. Don't take money out of your home, and so that you become enslaved and you can't serve God. That's a way that that home can become an idol. You want to avoid doing that. Keep it, make your payments as low as possible. Drive junky cars. Do whatever you've got to do. Don't take a trip. Uh, do whatever you've got to do to keep that uh, payment as low as possible. That way you can serve God. There was a time when I had $15,000 a month in mortgage payments. And when I, you know, uh, Hurricane Katrina came around, I wanted to go help out, but then I thought, you know what, I've got all these payments and everything, I'm not going to do it. Uh, it, there was, it was a form of bondage for me, it caused fear, fear and helped, it kept me stuck. You know, that's a bad feeling, so avoid that, avoid that, do, avoid huge payments, okay? Don't buy something beyond your means. If you've got a lot of kids, let them live in a bedroom together, they'll be happier in the long run. Uh, to learn how to get along with people. Get, get a condo. Don't have to have a big house. Get a condo. You know what? And then uh, get on the HOA board and then you can be a witness and a light to all the people in your condo development. You know, I've talked to people that don't know any of their neighbors uh, since they've moved into a house where as when they were in a condominium project, they knew a lot of people. They made lots of friends. So that's, you know, that's another thing. Uh, third thing, don't brag about your home. Don't brag about how much the home has gone up in value. There's a story in the Old Testament about King Hezekiah, and King Hezekiah had his palace, and people from Babylon came over, and he invited them into the home, and he showed them all his treasures and everything, and he's bragging about this and that, and those Babylonians went back, and they started planning 
on uh, attacking, you know? And I think that story is an illustration. And King Hezekiah was judged for what he did. Uh, he pleaded for God, but God said, okay, in a future, you know, future time, they're going to come back uh, and invade. Uh, so, so I think that story is for us today. Don't brag about how much your home has gone up in value, especially when people around people who maybe don't own a home yet, you know, uh, if you're explaining to them the benefits of, you know, home ownership and this and that, that's good. Uh, but, but don't brag when people are having that conversation. You know what you do? You switch the subject. You don't even get involved because that's what people are talking about nowadays, you know. Uh, so that's so that's a good thing. So anyway, idol prevention. Don't put your home above God. Keep God as your God and just let your home be considered a blessing and use it to bless other people. So that's it. So thanks for watching.